Hi there, so this is segment 3B, uh, and we're going to do some examples. Um, starting off with one about a spherical pressure vessel. We've looked before at a cylindrical vessel, uh, now it's time to look at a spherical vessel. And the question relates to uh, a Magnox power station. These are the old steel vesseled um, uh, nuclear power stations that were in operation in the UK, um, and the last one of these closed a few years ago. Uh, and they were very large steel pressure vessels containing uh, CO2 gas, which was the coolant, and that was at a pressure of 20 bar, or 2 megapascals. And they were about 60 feet in diameter, that is they had a radius of about 10 meters, and they were about 3 inches thick. They were built in the days when we built everything in imperial units, so they're about 75 millimeters uh, wall thickness. And the question is, what's the stress in the vessel? Um, you know, is that a big number or a small number compared to the yield stress for steel? And uh, so what we do is we uh, take a, imagine taking a sphere, so take a sphere like that, something like that, um, there's a sphere, um, and uh, we do what we did before, we take a, an imaginary cut, which we can take, if we're thinking about this little element on the, on the vessel here, uh, then we can take that two ways, we can take it horizontally, or we can take it vertically. Um, and either way, we'll, we'll get the same answer, actually. So if we take it vertically, then we'll get something like this. Uh, and we make it. Sorry. Make our imaginary cut. Here. So that's the back side. And then we'll have an inside that looks something like that. Um, and uh, what we'll have then, it we'll have a, sp a stress that's restraining this vessel from going off uh, over that way. So that's be a, a stress operating all the way outside the ring, um, and we'll call that a hoop stress. And um, we'll have a pressure acting on this area here And what our imaginary cut, we've got to balance forces across that cut plane. Um, and uh, that gives us a means to find the stresses. So if we take a, a thin walled vessel, then its circumference is 2 pi r. It's got a thickness t. That's the area on which the hoop stress is acting. So that gives us a total force. And it's opposed by a pressure which is acting on the area of a circle, pi r squared. Um, so if we want to find uh, the hoop stress, then we just uh, take those down there. So we've got P pi r squared over 2 pi r t. The pi's are going to cancel, the r and the r squared will cancel, and we'll end up with P r over 2 t being the answer for our stress. And uh, the pressure is 20 bar, which is 2 megapascals. The radius uh, is 5 meters, um, and the wall thickness, T, is 75 millimeters. Um, actually, it's a slightly different vessel to the one that we really used. Um, and uh, then, uh, and I'm doing this in a slightly different way to the, to the one in the notes, actually, but there you go. doesn't matter. Hold a second. <coughs> so we've set up our problem. So we've got a hoop stress here. We can now put those numbers in. And uh, we can say that's 20 times r is 5 meters divided by 2, divided by 75 millimetres is 0 0.075 metres. And the right R and T need to be in the same units, really, and then this comes out just as megapascals, just the same. So then when we work that out, then we get an answer of 66.7 megapascals. And so on our little element, which is our little element which was here, then if we expand that out, 
we've got a little element like this, and it's got a hoop stress there, and a hoop stress there, actually, uh, if I draw my, draw my arrow right. And then we've got a, a potentially uh, a radial stress there. So uh, if we write down our stress matrix, if we write down our stress matrix or tensor as being r theta z, r theta phi, uh, sorry, for a spherical polars, and r theta phi going down here, r theta phi. If it's thin, we can't support any stresses in the thin direction. Um, that is in the radial direction, so those must all be zero. We haven't specified any shear in the problem, and we've just got this answer of 66.7 for the two hoop stresses. And if I did the cut horizontally on my sphere, I would end up with the same calculation in effect, which is why the two hoop stresses are the same. Um, so that's then the stress matrix for this situation, and if you like, uh, as a shorthand, people will quite often write that as being 66.7, 66.7 MPA, and say that it's a 2D stress state. And that's called, when it's a 2D stress state, when there's no stress in the through thickness direction, that's called a state of plane stress. When there's no stress in the third direction, which in this case is the radial direction. So that's uh, the answer, essentially, to question one. Um, and um, what we've done here is we've taken our body, we've taken sections to find the stress, we've drawn out a little element, and that's quite often a very helpful thing to do in terms of working out where the axes are so we can write down our stress tensor. And then, uh, if you wanted to manipulate the stress tensor to rotate it to find the principal axes or something like that, you would then carry on and do that from there. And then you might when you had your rotated stress tensor, you might relate the, the rotation you've done to the axes back on your little elemental cube and then back on your body. So that's the sort of sequence we go through in solving these stress problems. So that's question one. So questions two to four are simply some uh, circle problems to have a go at and solve. And they build up to building up to more and more complex uh, starting off stress tensors. They're all 2D, um, and it's just a case of uh, working those through, uh, working through the different sorts of scenarios we can have. So the first scenario, question two, is a stress state of pure shear. So that is our little elemental square. Draw some axes. Uh, has uh, stresses here of 0 and 0, and a shear stress here of 25 MPA. That's our little elemental square. And the question is, find the principal stresses and the maximum shear stress. What's the angle between the plane of maximum shear and the principal uh, stresses and the principal axes? So uh, what we do is we take our Mohr circle and we take two points, which is 0, 25, and 0, 25. Uh, but we've got to draw the second of them on the sort of negative, if you like. The tor axis goes positive in both directions all because of that squaring business. So we've got uh, 0, 25 as being our first point, 0, 25 as being our second point. There's our stress axis. This is our tor axis. And we draw a circle between them. Now, this is a fairly boring situation. The center of the circle is at the origin, 0, 0. The radius is trivially 25 MPA, so that's 25. So the first principal stress is here at 25, and the second principal stress is here at minus 25. So our principal uh, stresses are minus 25 and plus 25 megapascals. And our principal stress matrix is 25 minus 25, 0, 0 megapascals. 
And the convention is, and this is just a convention, is sigma 1, this one in the 1, 1 element is the plus 25, is the bigger one, and sigma 2 is the smaller one, so that's the minus 25. And the angle between uh, our original stress state, which is, notice, that is the plane of maximum shear, that is the maximum shear stress, is the radius in a circle, so we can write that down, the max shear stress equals the radius of Mohr's circle equals 25 MPa. It's always worth being sure you've answered the whole question explicitly, even if it is obvious. Um, and the angle between that plane and maximum shear, which is this, this stress state here, those two that are 180 degrees from each other in um, a circle or 90 degrees from each other, that is these two original axes uh, in, in real life. Um, and that's an angle here, or I should probably draw it actually here. That's 2 theta, oops, 2 theta. And 2 theta is, again, obviously 90 degrees. So theta is equal to 45 degrees. And that's the angle between the plane of the maximum shear. It's the angle between the plane of max shear and the principal stresses. So if I look at the question, I've answered uh, what are the, the principal stresses, what's the maximum shear stress, what's the angle between the plane of maximum shear and the principal stresses. I've answered all the problems in the question. So the principal stresses are We do a rotation of 45. I want to use a better pen, don't I? Let's use purple. Have a rotation of 45 degrees about Z, as I've drawn it. So Z would be, get your right hand out, X, Y, Z. Z's out of the page. Z. And that gives us a stress, uh, the principal stress situation which is this, 25 minus 25 with no shear, 0 MPA, MPA, and MPA. Uh, and you've got to think about the rotation is up from X, so it's up from the original one, so it's a rotation there, so that's the plus, yeah, so it's a rotation that's gone around this way, so that's my 45 degrees there. So it's actually a rotation which is the other way around, like that, anti-clockwise. Um, so that's the relationship on the little infinitesimal square of between the two stress states uh, and their axes. And that's quite nice to draw out. Um, and it's always going to be true that the maximum shear plane and the principal axes are, uh, are 45 degrees apart, and that's a necessary consequence of the, it being the, in, uh, the negative inverse on the tan 2 theta uh, when we looked at the original equations, and it just drops out of my circle quite nicely, as it should. Uh, so now we move on to question 3. So now question 3 concerns a stress state of sigma is equal to 150, 0, 0, 0 MPA. So it's in the principal stress condition because there's no shears there already. Um, find the principal stresses. Well, we can write them down immediately. The principal stresses are 150 and 0 MPA since there are no shears present. Um, if we wanted to draw it in Mohr's circle, then we would draw them as 150 comma naught and uh, naught comma naught. Draw a circle between them. Then I know where my 
vertical and horizontal axes are. Okay, it's not a very good circle. Um, in fact, it's such a poor circle, I'm going to redraw it. There we go, a bit better. Um, the center, therefore, is midway between 150 and naught, so it's at 75. The radius is therefore 75. Uh, and therefore, the max shear is the radius. And these points are at 75, comma 75, and 75, comma 75. So then, in the max shear stress, in max shear condition, the stress matrix is 75, 75, 75, 75 MPA. And notice in the max shear condition, the two normal stresses are always equal to each other. It's, an, again, a necessary consequence of the way Mohr's circle works. And the angle between the plane of maximum shear and the principal stresses is again 45 degrees because it's uh, here 2 theta is 90 degrees. So the angle between the plane of max shear and the principal stresses It's 45 degrees, it's 90 degrees in most circles, the most circle is in 2 theta. So, uh, again, it's a necessary consequence of the way most circle works. So that's question three. Um. So now finally, question four. Uh, here, we have a stress state of, a bit more complicated, 150, 25, 25, 0. So I'll draw my little elemental cube again. There's x, there's y, 150, uh, 0, 25 MPA. That's my little elemental cube. Uh, the question asks, what are the principal stresses? And what, at what angle to the x-axis are the principal stresses found? So we draw uh, a Mohr circle between 150 comma 25, so let's draw that down here, and up here, uh, 150 comma 25, uh, sorry, 0 comma 25, and we'll draw a circle between them. There's 0 on the x-axis, on the horizontal stress, uh, normal stress axis. Uh, there's my sigma, there's my tor. Um, so the center here, midway between 0 and 150, is at 75. And now, if I draw a little triangle here, I've got 75, 25. And then this is uh, the radius here. It will enable us to find the maximum shear stress. Um, and will enable us to find the principal stresses that are there and there. So the radius is equal to the square root, so just Pythagoras, 75 squared plus 25 squared, which is equal to 25 times root 10. Um, and if I uh, um, consult that, that gives me an answer of 79 megapascals. Uh, root 10 is about 3 and a bit, so that makes sense. Always worth asking yourself if it makes sense. Um, and so uh, the principal stresses are 75 plus minus 79 megapascals. That is equal to uh, minus 4 and 154 megapascals. Um, and um, so that gives me the principal stresses. The maximum shear stress... It's just the radius, it's 79 megapascals, it's, it's, it's up there. Uh, and what's uh, the angle between the x-axis, so that's the one the 150 was on, and um, 
the principal stresses. We haven't specified which one, so we could calculate. It's most obvious probably to calculate that angle. Uh, you could calculate that angle as well if you wanted to, or instead. Uh, it doesn't specify in the question. So, But if we do this, then we can say that tan 2 theta is equal to 25 over 75, opposite over adjacent, which is equal to a third. And therefore, we can get a calculator out to find 2 theta. Um, and uh, that then gives us a theta of 9.2 degrees. So 2 theta is 18.4. Uh, um, and uh, that gives us a, an angle for 2 theta, which is the angle between the original stress state, stress state, state, and the axis on which the larger principal stress is found. That's what I've calculated there. Okay, so if we do a, a little rotation here uh, of 9.2 degrees, so there's my z. If I do a little rotation that way, about z of 9.2 degrees, then I get a little cube which is like that. And there's my original, so that's my 9.2. And that's the one on which I've got 154 MPa minus 4 MPa and no shears operating at all. So that's the way to interpret what we've done in terms of this angle. Um, so that's uh, question four, and that's a quick walkthrough, a couple of uh, little Mer circle examples, and that's how you use Mer circle in practice. So it's quite confusing to think about in theory, but once you start doing some problems, it all becomes a, a method, a routine, um, that hopefully is quite easy. Um, so the great joy about my circle is if you can draw a circle, you don't need to remember any equations. It's lovely. Um, so I'll see you next time.